Chess friends, I hope you are doing well. A new chess engine named Stockholm, has arrived with over 3,800 ELO ratings, especially known for its high accuracy, depth, and statistics. Today, I have an intriguing and intense chess game with it, where I sacrificed my pieces wonderfully to expose its kingside, let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with e4, and black responded with d6, but at this point, you might consider playing e6, which is known as the French defense and is a good choice, black could respond like this, leading to the Paulson variation, another possibility is that black can play with e5, then after the knight moves out, you can take the pawn and play knight to f6, which is the Petrov defense, the game could also unfold in this manner, however, in the actual game, black decided to go with d6, which is known as the pirate defense, you know, Black's main idea is to plant their bishop in this fiancato line and develop it, because this bishop cannot move ahead on this diagonal due to being completely blocked, therefore, you should aim to dominate your center by playing either e5 or c5. And then continue with knight to c6 or develop your queen side with the bishop fiancato diagonal, which is a good strategy. However, after a couple of moves later when I played knight to c3, Black decided to play e5, some of you may consider capturing the e-pawn, but doing so would open up the file, others may think of exchanging queens, leading to an immediate endgame. But as I am stockfish, I want to show you an amazing and incredible chess game, which is why I held on in the game by playing knight to f3, putting pressure in the center, now, black has two main ideas, either playing their knight on d7 or placing it on c6, Playing knight to c6 to control the center seems impractical, when I play pawn to d5, black's knight has to retreat, and after I play bishop to c4, black will likely play g6, there's a master strategy behind this pawn chain structure. Involving moves like pawn to h6, knight h5, followed by knight to f4, therefore, after developing the bishop and castling, he can execute the dominating move, pawn to f5, putting pressure on the center with the bishop, you should also be cautious of my light squared bishop, as it's poised to strike hard on the king side, returning to the position, we didn't see the move knight to c6, and Stockholm also avoided typical moves, so after moving the bishop to c4, after knight d7, I aimed to attack the pawn with my knight on g5, my bishop and knight could mount a strong attack along this diagonal, black countered with h6 to prevent this, I then progressed on the queen side by playing pawn to a4, some may consider playing bishop to e7 and castling long, given the overwhelming structure, another option is to play knight to b6, immediately attacking the bishop, however, I opted for the astonishing move of sacrificing my bishop on f7, after capturing the bishop. I can easily take black's pawn on e5, which is a dominant position, the knight cannot go to g4 to target the pawn, as I can capture black's knight, this creates a vulnerable situation, with the pinned pawn to the queen, leading to a difficult position for black, so if they dare to play knight to d7, continuing from there, after playing a5, the knight indeed has only one move, to c4, to target the pawn again, however, I can go further by sacrificing my pawn with e6. If you decide to capture the pawn with your king, your king becomes exposed, I can then play queen d5 check and capture the knight on c4, leaving your king completely exposed, from there, I can play knight to d5, attacking your king and the c7 pawn simultaneously with my queen, this creates a challenging position for you. Going back, we observed the move knight to b6, and although bishop to e7 was the best move to consider, black decided to go with a5, this move creates a weakness on the b5 square, where my knight or bishop can swiftly infiltrate. Therefore, Black had to play c6 to protect that square, moving knight to b5 will attack the bishop, and additionally, you can infiltrate your rook by moving it to the b8 square to advance your pawn in the future if desirable, after castling, black played pawn to c6 to protect that square and to open up lines for the bishop and knight, thereby dominating the center, after the bishop moves back, we move the queen to c7, this queen c7 move is very intriguing and has a strategic idea of playing bishop e7 followed by knight f8 and knight to g6, then the bishop goes to g4 to pin down the knight, next, the knight will come to h4 to create a vulnerable situation around the king's side, 
Additionally, the queen c7 move dominates in the center, providing an open file for the rook by playing rook to d8, therefore, I played the knight to h4 intending to put the knight on f5 to create an attack on the king's structure, however, my opponent immediately captured my pawn on d4, after the captures occurred. They instantly played knight to c5, putting pressure on the center pawn, this move prevents my knight from reaching the f5 square, as the bishop file gets opened, so, after playing bishop to f4, I attacked the d6 pawn, you might think this pawn is well protected, prompting me to move out the bishop and play long castle, but if you do so, I can easily capture your knight, and you'll notice that your pawn is pinned down to the queen, weakening your position significantly, therefore, in this position. He played knight to h5 to put pressure against the bishop, as the bishop moves back, you might argue that bishop to g3 was also protected, allowing the pawn to capture on the g3 tile however, you can see that my pawn structure would become vulnerable, and this 7 drag is well protected by his queen and his structure, after moving out his bishop to e7, he is going to castle and attack the knight, from this position, I played an astonishing and incredible move, can you guess it? The move is playing rook to e1, this move directly sacrifices the knight on h4, additionally, my rook has the potential to open up the e-file, where the bishop has good diagonal control, he decided to capture the knight right away, in response, I opened up the file by pushing my pawn on the e-file, which also targets the bishop on h4, if you move back your bishop to protect it and your king, I can easily capture on the d6 square, creating a vulnerable situation in the middle of the board. Protected by the queen. In this position, you might consider playing knight t6 to challenge the queen, however, I can easily capture the knight, leaving your queen still under threat. If you choose to capture my pawn, you risk losing your bishop on c8. Even if you attempt bishop takes h2 check and then capture my bishop on the next move, I can gain a significant advantage by playing bishop to f4, directly challenging your queen, which remains under attack. Let's return to the position, we've discussed the move bishop to e7, now, let's consider if you dare to play queen e7 to protect the bishop, however, this move can create a vulnerable situation for you after I capture the pawn on d6. My rook can then maneuver there, further complicating your position, let's return to the current position, black initiates with queen d8 to protect the bishop, I then capture the d6 pawn, gaining the pawn on the 6th rank effortlessly, this move opens up my rook's file and allows my bishop to control a strong diagonal, my queen also puts pressure on the knight, when black plays knight to e6 to challenge my queen, I capture the knight. After the capture, I advance my d-pawn to the 7th rank, regardless of which piece you use to capture, if you choose the bishop, I can respond with bishop to g5 check, targeting both your king and queen simultaneously, resulting in a lost piece. In this position, if you play queen takes d7, now, I regain my piece by capturing your bishop on h7, your knight is under attack, forcing you to retreat it, I gain control of the diagonal by playing bishop to c5, this weakens your black king's position. As I have an open rook file, and my other rook can soon join the attack, returning to the key position, black's best move is king to f8, which was actually played in the game, let's analyze my position here, I have the 7th rank pawn, which is influential and creates a superior position for me, it all started when I played rook e1 several moves ago, sacrificing my knight right away, after a couple of moves later, we arrived at this position where I could gain a passed pawn by sacrificing my knight, so. Here I decided to play queen c5 check, and after the bishop moved, I captured his knight on h5, you can see that my knight can maneuver to e2 and then f4 to attack the bishop in conjunction with the rook and knight, his king structure is completely vulnerable, where my bishop can potentially come to d4 and create a much weaker situation on g7, now you have to deal with this d7 pawn, and if you dare to capture it with your bishop, I can easily move my rook forward to d1 to activate this file. And your queen will be vulnerable, if you dare to unpin your queen by moving it to c7, I can easily sacrifice my bishop on the b6 square, then, you'll have to capture it back, after these exchanges and rook love to e7, you'll see that your bishop, and f7 pawn are in vulnerable positions, potentially losing a piece and ending the game soon, let's go back to the position, we have queen takes d7 and rook to e1, 
followed by queen to c8 and h3 to protect the g4 square, where the bishop could potentially attack my queen and rook, if the bishop moves to d4, it will attack the g7 square, allowing my knight to maneuver from e2 to f4 to create a joint force attack with the rook on the bishop, I'm working to expose the black king, especially after it moves up to connect its two rooks, my knight can move from e2 to potentially go to the a4 square to attack the bishop, the bishop responds by moving to b4 to target the rook first, then I play c3. You can see that the bishop is in a terrible position, if you consider playing bishop to d6, I can sacrifice my bishop on g7, exposing your king and leading to a game over situation, so, if you ever consider playing the move bishop to e7, my knight can come to f4 to reinforce the bishop, after the rook moves to e8 to save his bishop, I can sacrifice my rook on e6, then play a check on the g6 square and checkmate you on g7 by capturing the pawn, this results in checkmate by the queen and bishop. If you play rook to g8 to protect the checkmating square, I can sacrifice my rook again on e6, leading to a check with queen g6, the king moves back, and queen takes h6, resulting in another checkmate, this position shows that your king is in a terrible condition due to the bishop, rook knight, and queen. In this position, he didn't play the move bishop to e7, instead, he moved his bishop back to the f8 square, his bishop is protecting his kingside structure, but I have my knight on f4 attacking the bishop, as the bishop moves back, I move my rook up to d2, you can see that most of your pieces are in passive positions, while my bishop and knight are causing trouble in your kingside, my rook controls the open file, and my queen is active. All my pieces are working together, creating a vulnerable situation for your position, after bishop p6 to target the knight, I played a decisive move, bishop takes g7, sacrificing the bishop, because your bishop was also hanging. Your opponent decided to capture the knight first, then I moved my rook to d4 to attack the bishop, if you try to save your bishop by playing bishop to g5 and protect that square, because if you move your in any other square, I can capture the pawn on h6, leading to a checkmate position, in this position, after you play bishop to g5, I'll show you what happens after I capture your rook on h8, king takes the bishop will create a positional weakness for your king side, after you capture with the queen. I can push my pawn to h4, forcing the bishop to move back, then, with a queen check and rook joining on f4, my queen and rook join forces to attack along this file, you might find joy in the fact that this pawn is snugly guarded by the bishop, but should you muster the courage to retreat your bishop to fortify your position, you'll notice that your queen on a8 remains trapped, dwelling in the most stagnant square, rendering it utterly passive, meanwhile, I could unleash c4 to tighten the grip on your territory and launch an assault on your king, this sets the stage for a highly precarious scenario for the black king, so going back, we saw the move behind bishop g5, so in the game, we had king takes g7, rook takes f4, unleashing an attack with the two rooks and the queen, forcing the move queen e5 check, even the rook is coming via rook e3 to the g3 square, so the bishop goes out to e6 and the queen to e5 for a check, forcing the king to move. If you dare to move back your queen, to g8, I can easily develop my rook to e3 then g3 to unleash an attack. After the king moves, I played my rook to launch an attack on the h6 square with my queen in the next move, so after the queen moves, queen to f4 happens, and the king goes to g7, then I sacrifice my rook on e6 square, that's the most aggressive rook sacrifice because after you capture the rook, it exposes the king completely, creating a procrastination scenario, after I capture the pawn on e6, you'll see that queen e5 check is coming, and regardless of your move choice, your game is essentially over. If you opt for a normal move like rook to a6, I can initiate queen to e5 check first, forcing the king to move. After the king goes to g8, I can play rook g6 check, followed by a series of checks, ultimately leading to a deadlock situation for you due to the checkmate threat on the e7 square. Going back to the position, there are no normal moves available since queen e5 is looming, when you offered me an exchange with queen to g5, I declined it with queen check, queen d4 check, and after the king moves, I played f4 to reposition the queen, regardless of where the queen moves, it leads to a deadlock situation for you, for instance, 
If you play queen to d8, I can respond with queen e4 to threaten queen g6, if you try to protect that square by moving your rook to g8. It creates a vulnerable situation because your rook on g8 loses control over the h7 square, consequently, after a check, king moves, rook g6 check occurs, followed by king moving back, rook takes h6 king g7 and rook h7, resulting in a checkmate. Going back to the position, since the queen has no square to run he decided to play rook d8, exchanging the queens forcefully and after a series of exchanges. You can observe that I have two pawns in the king's side and it is completely winning for me because after I move my rook to attack on the pawn. You have no way to protect it, and I picked up that pawn, I have two connected past pawns in the king's side, it is completely unstoppable for him, and after a series of moves later, we have rook a3 rook check. I am pushing my g and h pawns for the quick vistory. He has only one rook and a pawn which is just a nut, and after a couple of moves later becomes a checkmate. So, what I gain, I hope you really liked my presentation, is it so then don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wish you all the best bye bye see ya.